whether it's a play, or it's a history book, whether it is politics, or it is economics, whether it is a statue, or it's a business course. It's bringing it together into one synthesis based on life. And so Drucker's point is his, his music teacher says to him, you can't compose like Mozart, but you can practice like Mozart. Again, those of you who play golf, you may not be able to putt like a great golfer, but you can practice putting like a great golfer does. And that means that once you begin to realize that it's a small number of practices and that you can practice effectiveness until it becomes the way you are, you literally grow and change. You become the habits. Somebody came to me a while ago about taking pictures. I take pictures very efficiently because I have to. Because I, take, I, mean, I have so many pictures made all week. And so I've learned to totally relax. And, and most people watch yourself the next time somebody takes your picture. You tense up. I do just the opposite. I totally relax. For me, taking the picture is a moment of rest. It's a practice I learned in order to survive doing what I do. Jack came to me one time. He used to practice falling. Because when you're a quarterback, you get to fall a lot. <laughs> And he said, literally, you can practice falling in a way that you minimize damage to your ribs. And so he literally would practice. And I was very impressed because it's a practice. It's a habit. You, once you can identify pieces that work, you're going to run a small business, there are hundreds of little habits that make the difference. You want to be a public speaker? There are habits you can learn. And as you practice them, they become how you function. Now, the other thing he said that I, I think was so important that I underline one word he doesn't underline. All effective executives have had to learn to be effective. Remember, he says here that after 45 years of studying, studying executives, every one of them, Marshall, Sloan, Eisenhower, Vail, every one of them had to practice. There were no natural born effective executives, which is also a sign of great hopefulness, right? And he goes a step further. He says all effective executives have had to practice effectiveness until it became a habit. So first you have to learn how to be effective. Very important distinction here, two-step process. First you learn it, then you practice it. They're not the same. Learning in an academic setting is enough to pass the test. Practicing is enough to live it in your life. Do you do it automatically every day? I mean, listening. I am not a natural listener. All of you by now know this. I am a natural talker. I love to babble. My, my grandmother used to say that I clearly had a lot of Irish blood because I would just babble all the time. I, and my grandmother was a doctor, so she's allowed to say these things. This was not an ethnic slur. Uh, you know, and I like to wander around. You know, but I've learned the first discipline when I start a meeting is what, what do you think I do? You ask questions. You listen. You go around the room. You gather the information. That's a learned, and, and I'll, I'll go into meetings where I'm tired and I'm in a hurry, and I'd like to cut through all that and get right to my deciding, and I stop myself and I say, don't <coughs> do it. Because if you do it, it's, it's like trying to rush a cake. Now we'll bake it for half the length, we'll, we'll turn the heat up an extra 150 degrees. <laughs> You know, and literally what Drucker is offering you is a cookbook on effectiveness. He says a third thing, which I think is one of the most encouraging comments I've ever read. All the ones who worked on making themselves effective succeeded. I'm back and double checked it. Every person he knows who actually worked at it became an effective executive. Now, if you go back in, notice how radical this is in terms of the discontinuity we've been living through. I mean, the idea of walking into a public housing project means, hi, hi, all of you can learn to manage yourself. And by the way, if you'll practice these habits, all of you will learn how to be an effective executive. How different is that from the current tone? And we'll create a ladder you can climb. Do you see how totally different that is? psychologically, in expectations, in structure of thought. Now, I decided, I hate to do this, but I, I looked at it and I looked at it and I decided that, that just as a way of starting the game. I mean, I, I really last week was trying to figure out 
how could I not put up Chiron to tell you about this book? Because I don't want anybody who's watching to think, oh, I've now heard about the book, so I don't have to read it. This book is, so, when you realize that everything I just showed you up to that point is out of those first two pages, and then there's the rest of the book. But I think the core principles are so powerful, I want to spend a minute or two with you. For, the first one is, know and manage your time. Bob Weed, who was my first administrative assistant, was a great Drucker fan. And Weed and I really were built into this habit. I manage my calendar all the time. I manage it annually. I manage it quarterly. I manage it monthly. I manage it weekly. I manage it daily. I manage it hourly. I am extremely aware of how I spend my time. So when people say to me, how can you be Speaker of the House, go back home and have a town hall meeting, teach at Reinhardt, write a book, the answer is, because I spend more time managing my time than anybody I've ever met. I mean, and it's I'm, because I'm a, I'm a disciple of Drucker. And I know it works. And so you, you get up and you say to yourself, what do I, first, and, he, and he, makes it, he makes a very important point. This goes back to pragmatism and to learning about reality. What is the first thing Drucker says you should do in order to manage your time? Anyone remember? Record, uh, record it. Right. First he says, this is pragmatism, learn how you are spending your time, right? Now, as an example, I made the ultimate sacrifice, at least in terms of normal peacetime behavior. I called my wife last night and I said, we have been running so hard the last week and we only have such a short time off tomorrow that I'm prepared to give up the Super Bowl and just hang out with her and to heck with her. She doesn't totally believe me yet, but we're negotiating. <laughs> but my point was, I suddenly stopped and said to myself, yes, in a normal environment, I really like to sit and watch the Super Bowl, but given what the last week's gonna be like, what the next week's gonna be like, what the last month is gonna be like, what the next month's gonna be like, is that nearly as important to me as just hanging out with Marianne? And you have to make real decisions. But if you don't stop, if I had not stopped and said, what's this last week been like? What is next week going to be like? You said, well, we can watch Super Bowl, but we'll find some time later on in the week. Nonsense. Not right now, not what I'm doing. And not what she's doing either, because she just got a promotion. So it's really sort of, you know, you, you, you got to, but you got to start by saying, how are you spending your time? Then you got to say, what are your goals and, and values and priorities? So now you've got column A, how, how you are spending your time, and you've got column B. What is it you think you'd like to do? Then you've got to create column C, which is to impose B on A. And one of the points Drucker makes, which has been invaluable in, in my training, is the higher up you go, the less time you have because everybody below you has the right to claim your time. So I know I start every week with a whole range of meetings I can't get out of before I get to decide anything about my time. It's the opposite of the way people think it works. Now, that means I have to reach way out, three, four, or five months, and figure out what it is I want my associates doing so that they're calling the meetings I want to go to. Because if I don't get them doing the right things, they'll be doing the wrong things, and I'll be going to meetings on the wrong topics. So the only way I can control my time is to strategically be so far ahead of the system that I'm assigning task forces on the topics I want to meet on, because they are going to call me to the meetings. I won't have any choice. So I'd better think through three months from now what do I wish we were meeting on. Otherwise, if I wait and decide Monday, what I'll find out is that I've already spent 80% of my time in meetings I can't get out of. Does, does that, do you all begin to see a little bit of, so you've got to start with what are you doing? And you do that by literally recording every 15 minutes. And if, as you get important, you have a staffer who does it with you. Then you look at what do you wish you were doing? And then you stop and you put the two together. And, which means making choices. 